Well, I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving because, sorry, it's time for some news. Right. And if your Thanksgiving involved heated arguments with relatives and family members over the direction this country is going to be heading for the next four years, sorry. We'll be covering lots more of that. Yeah. But as a nice tasty appetizer before our headache-inducing main course, we first turn to the world of orcas who continue to provide a nice distraction during our trying times. Orcas were already fascinating animals before they declared a total war on boats off the coast of Spain, but that whole phenomenon has really highlighted how intelligent and social these animals are, with the prevailing theory about the boat attacks being that they simply find it fun, and that it has spread through the orca community like basically a cetacean TikTok challenge. So, like humans, orcas, they're into trends. And in the time we've been following the news about boat attacks, we've learned about other orca trends, like one that arose in the 1980s in the Pacific Northwest, wearing dead fish as hats. Okay, so like so many other 80s fashion trends, one young orca started wearing a salmon on its head in the summer of 87, and within weeks, the whole local orca community was getting in on it, until eventually everyone was doing it, and it wasn't cool anymore. Once the dad orca walks in with a salmon on his head, everyone says, boom. It's a wrap on that. But the thing about 80s fashion trends is that they always come back eventually. And recently, scientists and whale watchers up in Puget Sound have once again spotted orcas wearing dead salmon on their heads as hats. Because it's, it's cool again. Yeah. They might be doing it ironically. We're not sure. But it's been long enough that it's probably uh, just... Another trend that has it's circled back. It's the orca version of like those pit viper sunglasses that look ridiculous, but they're a throwback to the 80s, and um, some people think they look cool. Yeah, that or like a, maybe like a Jinko jeans, because they're coming back. They're having a moment, well, right, that's kids? more of a right, 90s. Kids? And listen, Jinko never went away. <laughs> some of us purists have <laughs> been wearing them the whole time. <laughs> you don't know what's going on under this camera. We're actually wearing one pair of pants. Yeah, I got so much airflow in uh -huh. these legs of mine. Uh, anyways, here, here's live science with more on salmon hats. Researchers think the orcas sporting salmon hats now may be veterans of the trend when it first <laughs> appeared nearly 40 years ago. It does seem possible that some individuals that experienced the behavior the first time around may have started it again. Andrew Foote, an evolutionary ecologist at the University of Oslo in Norway, told New Scientist... The motivation for the salmon hat trend remains a mystery. Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Deborah Giles, an orca researcher at the University of Washington, who also heads the science and research teams at the nonprofit Wild Orca, told New Scientist. Orca researchers' best guess is that salmon hat fads are linked to high food availability. South Puget Sound is currently teeming with chum salmon. And with too much food to eat on the spot, orcas may be saving fish for later by balancing them on their heads, New Scientist reported. Orcas have been spotted stashing food away in other places, too. We've seen mammal-eating killer whales carry large chunks of food under their pectoral fin, kind of tucked in next to their body, Giles said. Salmon is probably too small to fit securely under orcas' pectoral fins, so the marine mammals may have opted for the top of their heads instead. Yeah, they don't have pockets. Yeah. And they don't have thumbs. So... I, I choose to believe this is them just having fun again. Hey, look at me. Like... It's an abundance down here. We've got it's, so much salmon. Let's just wear it on our heads. It's the whale version of uh, that lady that went to the convenience store and put a, a bag of chips on her head. Mm -hmm. She's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so random. Yeah, crazy How frog's you just a regular frog to an orca like me. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Now, what's exciting for these researchers is that this time around, the technology for actually studying this is way more advanced and affordable than it was in the 80s. So they plan to use a bunch of drones to monitor the behavior and see, for example, how long an individual orca wears a salmon hat and whether they do in fact eat it when they're done with it. Hey, look, they sent stuff to watch us. Let's play with the salmon <laughs> even further. They're gonna think this is so cool. Yeah, we're look gonna me. <laughs> use the blowhole to shoot one up at the drone. Yeah. And yeah, if it turns out that they're just discarding their salmon hats instead of eating them, and it's just truly a fashion statement, yeah. uh, that, that would disprove the food abundance theory and it would send the scientists right back to the drawing board. Because, yeah, maybe they're just doing it because it's cool. And the fact that you don't get it means you're not cool. What they You should wouldn't do, understand, They Dad. should find the oldest orca in the pod and tie a salmon to its head, which is the style, the style. at the time, <laughs> right now, and see if the younger orcas are put off by that. I think they would be. Yeah. Ew, Grandpa Orca mm. wearing a salmon hat? I think I'm done with those. 
slowly slides off. Yeah. Uh, well, there's another mystery to solve later. I'm sure they'll get it figured out. Yeah, I want, I want us to figure that one out before the world ends. Yeah. We don't have much time. But moving on now to one more story before we get into all that political bullshit. This one comes to us from the great state of Florida. And it's an inspiring story about the tremendous lengths that a Florida man and a Florida woman will go to have a baby. Uh, even when the odds are obviously stacked against them. Here's People. A Florida woman who became pregnant while in jail on murder charges gave birth to a baby whose father is a fellow inmate accused of murder, even though she says they've never met in person and have never had physical contact with each other. Okay. It's like the baby Jesus. Yeah, immaculate conception. Yeah. Florida court records indicate that both Daisy Link and Joan DePaz are currently in custody being held on charges of murder. Both have been in custody since at least 2022. But WSVN reports that in June, Link gave birth to a daughter fathered by DePaz. She's a miracle baby. She's a blessing, Link, 29, told the station in a jailhouse interview, while Miami-Dade corrections officials told the station that an internal affairs investigation is ongoing. WSVN uh, interviewed both inmates who explained how Link was able to get pregnant while both parents were in custody at the Turner Guilfold Knight Correctional Center in Miami-Dade County. And actually, before we get into this, I want you to guess how they did it. What? How did they? Was it actually both of them fathering or, or yeah. having sex? How they did it? How they did it in separate rooms without ever having contact with each other? Uh, <laughs> they he he uh, produced some specimen and kept that specimen safe, potentially wearing it as a hat on his head, and walked it into an area where there was an intermediary that took the specimen and brought it to the the woman. Nope, you've overcomplicated it. Okay. Here you go. Link told the outlet that she and DePaz were able to speak to each other through the air conditioner vent in her cell. Okay. They also began passing notes and pictures to each other, and a romantic relationship began. DePaz, 23, told WSVN that he eventually shared that he wanted to have a baby, but knew that he might not have the opportunity for a long time because of the murder charges. Mm -hmm. Link agreed to try and have a child with her fellow inmate. The two used bedding to make a line between their two vents, which DePaz tells WSVN that he then used to pass semen rolled in saran wrap to Link in her cell. I was close enough, there just wasn't an intermediary. Yeah, no, they just rigged up some f crazy, like, clothesline semen delivery service but he still, between there. He still produced a specimen and kept it and sent it there. Yeah. For, you well, know, obviously, for use. There had to be semen involved. Well, you, you were correct about that, yes. I, I mean, my initial thought would have been that there was some. Uh, bad things happening between the correctional officers and the female prisoner. No, but they said the baby is his. Okay, there you go. He would kind of like roll it up, almost like a cigarette, <laughs> and he would attach it to the line that we had in the vent, and I would pull it through, Link told the station. From there, I had placed it inside of, you know, the yeast infection applicators. I'd placed it inside of there, and then from there, yeah, I administered it. Beep, bop, boop. Bob's your uncle. And yeah, the, the, that's, that's how babies are made, kids. Mm -hmm. So it is truly an inspiring tale of perseverance in the face of impossible odds. And just imagine how resourceful and clever that kid will be with the combined genes of both of these people and probably with the souls of their victims yeah, this trapped inside of him. This baby got the double murder gene, but also the double clever gene. Yeah. So uh, watch out for that guy. Could do great things, could do terrible things. Mm -hmm. Probably our next Elon Musk. Who's to say? So yeah, obviously the baby is destined for greatness, but... With that story out of the way, with nothing to worry about in regards to that child or those orcas. We should keep an eye on that kid. Sure. Yeah. But for now, let's move on to the inevitable politics section of the show. And actually, hold on, wait, let's delay it a little bit longer by taking a look at the politics of another country. That's right. That's right, the Philippines. It's your turn. Oh, so, boy. So to be honest, we haven't been paying much attention to the P Philippines since President Rodrigo Duterte left office and stopped providing us with a steady stream of insane quotes. But it turns out that just because things have gotten slightly quieter doesn't mean things are any less crazy. For starters, Duterte may have left office, but there is still a Duterte in office. His daughter, Vice President Sara Duterte. And things are apparently pretty tense between her and her boss, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., a.k.a. Bong Bong, who was elected <laughs> to office despite being the son of one of the most absurdly corrupt politicians in modern history. So we're dealing with two 
Second generation. Two second generation freaks. Yeah, and they're now apparently threatening each other with assassination. Oh, good. Oh, good. More instability around the world. Why not? Throw it on the pot. I mean, this is more par for the course for yeah. the Philippines. They've, they've always, always got something going on. Uh, here's the AP. Philippine Vice President Sara Duterte said Saturday she has contracted an assassin to kill the president, his wife, and the House of Representatives speaker if she herself is killed in a brazen public threat that she warned was not a joke. Okay. <laughs> Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamine referred to the active threat against President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to an elite presidential guards force for immediate proper action. It was not immediately clear what actions would be taken against the vice president. Presidential Security Command boosted Marcos' security and said it considered the vice president's threat, which was made so brazenly in public, a national security issue. <laughs> Were they like, wait, can she just say that? I mean, when you're the vice president... I guess they let you do it. I, well, we're going to find out. Mm. The presidential security force said it was coordinating with law enforcement agencies to detect, deter, and defend against any and all threats to the president and the first family. Duterte, a lawyer, later tried to walk back her remarks and said they were not an actual threat, but only an expression of concern over an unspecified threat to her own life. If I express the concern, they will say that that's a threat to the life of the president, she said. Why would I kill him if not for revenge from the grave? There is no reason for me to kill him. What's the benefit for me? Duterte told journalists. Why is uh, everybody freaking out? I'm just saying that if he has me assassinated, I do have a plan in place, a dead man switch, yeah. if you will, to ensure that he is also assassinated mm -hmm. in retribution. I don't see what the big deal is. As long as I'm not assassinated, no one else has to die. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> Everyone just looking around at each other in the room, just, uh, okay. All right. Seems... Seems pretty wild. She, I, what I mean, does she know? She is. They say she's a lawyer, and clearly, yeah, she's got the. She makes a great case. Sure. So yeah, this is the president and vice president of a country with 117 million people in it. They obviously got along well enough two years ago to run for office together, but I guess they've had a bit of a falling out. Yeah. Duterte has become vocally critical of Marcos and accused him of corruption, and Marcos has had Duterte's chief of staff arrested. And Duterte has rec recently told reporters that she has dreams about cutting off Marcos's head. And she threatened to go dig up his father's grave and dump his remains in the ocean. But only <laughs> defensively. Yeah. Only, I wouldn't do it unless they did something to me. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Don't put in the paper that I said of offensively. Listen, we all have dreams about all sorts of crazy things. Mine happened to be about cutting the head off of the president of the country, also my boss. Yeah. But it's just, you can't control your dreams. Yeah. As what? a lawyer, I know that you can What did I say? You can't be prosecuted for a dream. Uh, so yeah, the, this Sarah Duterte, obviously kind of nuts, runs in the family, I'd say. But again, Bong Bong is the son of the most corrupt leader in the Philippines' entire history. The, uh, he bled that country dry and ran off with like half the country's net worth uh, and uh, lived out his days in Hawaii with oh. the threat of like being arrested if he ever even came close to stepping foot. And... Somehow, despite being the most hated uh, person in that country, going back multiple generations, they were like, you know what? Let's elect that guy's son mm -hmm. as president. We Second love, time's a charm. We love a redemption story. So, yeah, you don't, you don't have to really pick sides here. You don't have to hand it to either of them. I just feel bad for the people of the Philippines. Yeah, but, I mean... They I, elected it. Yeah. They did. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's a very dysfunctional country. Lovely place. Yeah, definitely but, worth visiting. Beautiful, beautiful, natural beaches and uh, all sorts of things. But uh, yeah, kind of a mess in terms of the government. Yeah. Well, who? Hey, who amongst us? I know. We can't really throw stones from here. Yeah, no. So yeah, just let them fight, I guess. Um, see, be interesting to see how this turns out, because I believe... Uh, I believe her. I believe a presidential term in the Philippines is like six years. One term for six years. So they are... They only took office in 2022. I think that, so they got a while to go. Long road ahead. Uh huh. Maybe they can patch things up. I'm sure they will. Like I said, they love a redemption story. They do. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that at least puts our own situation here in a little bit of perspective. Yeah, it's so cool Although that we nothing resembling any of that story has ever happened yeah, here in the United say, States. Uh, well, you know, four years ago, we kind of had the president almost tried to have four the vice president I don't even kill. remember what happened last week. Four yeah. years ago? What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, you know. Obviously, some of us out there do remember when Trump tried, essentially, to have his vice president 
uh, assassinated. But oh. uh, no, that oh, was... Oh, yeah, that. That was... That was different. That was just a bunch of good old boys getting a little too riled up. Yeah. It's you know what boys happens being boys. They get that syrup in them. Yeah. Whew. I just had that high fructose corn syrup. Mm-hmm. Corn fed, corn bread. That's right. Through the air conditioning ducts. <laughs> Anyways, it is Trump time. And uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Uh, let's start with an update to some recent news about Trump's latest merch drop. We've got NFTs. We've got watches, shoes, and now Trump guitars. Wow. And they're all hideous and overpriced, but Trump's hungry little hogs, they never turned down an opportunity to give this man money. But with Trump guitars, those hogs may be left extra disappointed. Because as we noted before, these guitars bear a striking resemblance to the iconic Les Paul guitar sold by Gibson. And while Gibson knockoffs were all the rage back in the 70s and 80s, uh, they've apparently gotten a little bit more litigious. Their legal department uh, a little They're, more proactive yeah. these days. <laughs> and has even been working directly with U.S. Customs to stop Gibson knockoffs from getting in the country. So this shouldn't surprise anyone, but here's Consequence of Sound. Despite his name and face being all over the marketing, as well as the brand being called Trump Guitars, the company is not thought to be owned directly by the president-elect himself. Oh, clever. As the website lists the brand as being owned by a parent company called 16 Creative. Shortly after the unveiling of Trump Guitars, many players and enthusiasts noticed a strong resemblance between the design of the American Eagle electric guitar model and Gibson's recognizable Les Paul, specifically due to the shape of the body. Well, it seems that Gibson noticed the similarities too, as the brand has sent 16 Creative a cease and desist. We can confirm a cease and desist has been issued against 16 Creative, Gibson representatives told Guitar World. The design infringes upon Gibson's exclusive trademarks, particularly the iconic Les Paul body shape. As of now, it is unclear whether 16 Creative will indeed cease and desist, or if they'll push on with Trump guitars. At the time of writing, the Trump guitars website already lists the first edition of the American Eagle electric guitar as sold out. They're also still accepting pre-orders for the next line, the Presidential Series, which similarly uses a Les Paul style design. Those early, those early adopters, they're making out like bandits. Uh, you know, these are even more limited if the cease and desist actually works, which it won't. But, uh, it, you know? Yeah. I can't wait. If they're doing a whole Presidential Series, I can't wait for my Grover Cleveland guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Two necks. Yeah. Yeah. The only non-consecutive, uh, well, uh, Trump's would, he, Trump yeah. is in the, the Grover Club. Yeah. Yeah. Well, got a whole line of guitars coming up. I mean, for Trump, he looks at it and he goes, yeah, that's a guitar. That's a guitar. That's what a guitar Look, looks yeah. like. He doesn't know what a fucking guitar is. That's the one that's uh, Kid Rock plays. That's just the same thing. Yeah. Hey, hey, kid, why don't you come in here and play one of your fantastic songs? This does come at a great time, though, because, like, I believe, I may be wrong, but last I checked, the Gibson company was not doing great. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great opportunity for them to potentially make a whole bunch of money off of Trump's hogs. Yeah. Good for them. If infinite growth isn't even going to work on tech stocks, how could it work on expensive guitars? Yeah. Once everyone in the world has a guitar, <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, that's the thing. Guitars are like tattoos. Did you stop at one tattoo? No, you get a new you tattoo a like guitars. every three weeks. Yeah. All right, so. there you go. Well, I'll start with the Trump guitar, and then I'll yeah. work my way Work up. your way up to the next Trump guitar. Yeah. And How then... much could a guitar cost? $5,000? These Trump ones, they're obviously beginner guitars, and they cost, what, $1,000? <laughs> so I'm going to assume that all guitars start around five grand. Yeah. And do I have just the guitar for you, <laughs> sir? <laughs> right this way, sir. Yeah, it's called a Stratocaster, and you can tell it's great because the name is long. It's got a long name. And a long neck. A very long neck. But in other Trump news, he has just about finished staffing up the U.S. government for when he assumes office. And the people that he's hiring continue to be some of the most insane choices imaginable. That is not a stretch. This no. is chaos. In a lot of cases, it has more to do with his picks lacking any relevant job experience. But in the case of Trump's pick to run the FBI, it's actually more scary than funny. Because incoming FBI director Cash Patel is not only a real freak, He's also got lots of experience in government and is on record before his nomination talking about how he'd run things. And it's it's very chilling stuff. Yeah. Here's the New York Times last year reporting on a podcast conversation between uh, between Patel and Steve Bannon. We will go out and find the conspirators, not just in government, but in the media, Mr. Patel said. Yes, we're going to come after the people in the media who lied about American citizens, who helped Joe Biden rig presidential elections. We're going to come after you. Whether it's criminally or civilly, we'll figure that out. He added, 
We're actually going to use the Constitution to prosecute them for crimes they said we have always been guilty of, but never have. Earlier in the interview, when asked by Mr. Bannon whether a new administration would deliver the goods to get rolling on prosecutions early in a second term, Mr. Patel noted that the Trump team had a bench of all-America patriots, but he said he did not want to name any names, so the radical left-wing media can terrorize them. Okay, so huge fucking yikes there. Um, you know, we're just joking about being lined up and shot in the last episode, but Maybe yeah, we may have to record this show from an undisclosed location very soon. <laughs> the, the, the lighting just got 10 times darker. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, big, big yikes. But uh, here's Rolling Stone with uh, some more on that guy. On Saturday night, Trump announced he's selected Cash Patel to lead the FBI. Patel is one of Trump's most loyal enforcers and a conspiracy theorist, a 2020 election denier who wants to purge the so-called deep state. He recently publicly pledged to investigate and prosecute Trump's enemies in the media and government. For years, Trump had personally promised that he would appoint Patel to a very senior role in a new administration should he win. Patel is a hyper-maga, vengeance-minded Trump loyalist to the point that even some Trump advisors recognize as an extreme liability. Even if those aides and confidants aren't willing to do much to get in Patel's way, mostly due to Trump's protection of the man. Patel's reputation as a Trump loyalist stems not just from his overt devotion to the president-elect, but his explicit willingness to do anything rule of law and consequences be damned to please his commander in chief. In August, one Trump advisor told The Atlantic that the president elect understands that, quote, cash is the one you say to, hey, I'm not telling you to go break into the DNC, but. <laughs> That's like, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, allusions to Watergate. Yeah. That sounds like one. We're doing Watergate again, but good this time. Yeah. In his book, Government Gangsters, The Deep State, The Truth, and The Battle for Our Democracy, Patel included a list of members of the executive branch deep state whom he had marked for retribution. I'd shut down the FBI Hoover building on day one and reopen it the next day as a museum of the deep state, he said in an interview earlier this year. So yeah, this guy is fully on board with the Trump and Project 2025 agenda of purging the government of anyone disloyal to Donald Trump, and he is not afraid to get his hands dirty. We'd like to think that the FBI has enough people who would oppose that kind of thing, that Patel wouldn't get too far with it. And we would also hope that uh, even the Republican Senate would find him too extreme to confirm. But before that happens, current FBI Director Chris Wray, who Trump himself appointed to a 10-year term back in 2017, would have to either resign or be fired. So... Here's to hoping sanity prevails, but we're not holding our breath. I, we have lived through a Trump administration before, and what is going to happen is he is going to be asked behind the scenes ever so lovingly to resign. Yeah, uh, well, he's he's going... By saying, you're resigning. Yeah, right. He's gonna. Re it is just funny, though. He's like, oh, the corrupt FBI, which is run by the guy the that guy I The guy you appointed, you appointed, yes. Um, but, but anyways, yeah, aside from the terrifying aspect, Cash Patel, like all of Trump's picks, also has... A ridiculous side. And for him, it's the fact that he has published not one, not two, but three children's books about how the 2020 election was stolen. Hey, kids, gather around. It's your uh, favorite subject. You know, there's a lot the of books. The 2020 election. A lot of books missing from shelves in elementary schools and libraries across this nation. And I am going to be the man to fill those shelves with books about how Donald Trump was wronged. I'm going to be indoctrinating the children, but in the good way that isn't bad. It's called The Emperor's New Book, and it's on shelves across this great country. No, the series is actually called The Plot Against the King. And aside from the medieval fantasy setting, there is nothing allegorical here. The characters are literally political figures like Trump and Biden, but wearing robes and living in castles. It is some real freak shit. Yeah. And um, he's not fucking Bigfoot. Making Trump but a, a, a king. I mean, I, I know it's a convenient device for a children's book, but yeah, yeah, a little bit on the nose. Um, so terrifying, but also, again, what a weirdo. Yeah. Three of these books. Like, I assume they they sold well enough to justify all these sequels. But, yeah. Uh, wow. Can't wait for the fourth. Like the second one. have a whole saga going here. The second one is like based off. It's like the children's book adaptation of that Dinesh D'Souza movie, 2000 Mules, mm -hmm. that like even the distributor pulled from distribution because it like contains so many just straight up lies. Mm. And the idea of like 
sitting down a fucking like four year old and reading them. Like, We're gonna learn what? about how I Donald Trump. But this guy that you weren't even alive when this happened. Can I watch Bluey? No. 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 You have to hear about how a bunch of brave patriots went down to Washington, D.C. Uh, to smash a bunch of windows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kids love it. They it's love it. It's kids' favorite subject matter. Yeah. Is, and apparently it, it, for them, for the parents at least, this is all ended with a very happy ending. The, the next book is going to be a glorious end. And yeah. it didn't even... And you know what? Nothing mattered anyway. That's yeah. just every book before this. Uh-huh. Nothing mattered because the 2020 hey, election just doesn't matter. Yeah. Ugh. But, of course, you know, being a Trump loyalist doesn't always work out so great. Many cautionary tales on that front. And more to be made. And no one exemplifies that more than Mr. Rudy Giuliani, who has spent the last few years just in and out of court for a whole bunch of different civil and criminal matters. Some related to Trump, but a lot of them not. A mm. lot of them just related to him. Mm. Just being a freak in his spare time. And yeah, he owes more than his entire net worth to various people who have successfully sued him. And while all of Trump's legal troubles magically vanish once he is president, it's unlikely that Rudy's problems are going away. Oh, geez. Anyways, Rudy was in court this past week due to owing some people he defamed $148 million and not really seeming to do anything to actually come up with the money. And this court hearing resulted in what is now our favorite image of Rudy. And that is saying a lot. Because there are so many images of Rudy looking ridiculous. You got the oil coming out of the oh, hair. Yeah. You yeah. got four seasons total landscape. You got his, uh, his boxy shoes. The boxy shoes, the golf swing. The one where he goes like this. Oh! There's the so many good ones. But this one, I think it, it tops them all, at least for now. Yeah. Behold, a courtroom sketch of Rudy Giuliani pointing and yelling at a federal judge. It's just incredible. The artists here, they really captured not just the moment, but the man himself. Yeah. And that's the job of a courtroom reporter. It's like, you know, you're not just doing photographs with a pencil. You're you're capturing the mood. Yeah. You're capturing They definitely got the metaphysical side of things. They definitely got his temperament down. I mean, that is that's they got the teeth just right. Like that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's good stuff. Anyway, here's Reuters with some background on what exactly went down here. U.S. District Judge Louis Lyman in Manhattan previously threatened Giuliani with civil contempt for failing to surrender assets, including a luxury Manhattan apartment, to partially cover what he owes. Giuliani's lawyer, Joseph Camerata, told Lyman that his client had turned over 90% of the assets. But the judge questioned Giuliani's alleged struggle to secure paperwork to hand over his 1980 Mercedes vehicle, saying Giuliani's prior job as the top federal prosecutor in Manhattan was a sign he was fully competent. That prompted Giuliani, 80, to speak up complaining that his day-to-day life had been hamstrung by the election workers. Your implication that I have been not diligent about this is totally incorrect, Giuliani said from the defense table, pointing at the judge. I don't have a card. I don't have a credit card. I don't have cash, Giuliani said. I can't pay my bills. (laughs) Lyman then warned Giuliani that he could not speak again in court unless testifying under oath because his lawyer should do the talking. There should be no higher priority for your client right now than complying with the court's orders, period, Lyman told Camarada. So he wasn't even testifying. This was just an outburst in the middle of court. My life sucks! You want me to get rid of my car? I'm fucking ruined! I have nothing! Is this the car that he, like, showed up uh, in to to vote? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It might be. And I keep driving it around just to rub it in their face. And I fart in it all the time. Yeah. They're going to be sitting in my farts if they ever take this car. Oh! I shit my pants all the time, too. That's not on purpose. I'm trying to just fart, but sometimes poop comes out. Clean those floorboards. He's an old man. He's got, he's, they're slipping out of the pant leg constantly. I I assure you. God. Yeah. He's, he's definitely the dude who shakes one out in the uh, grocery store aisle. (laughs) And nobody's the wiser. But yeah, you know, all things considered, it's at least nice that this man's life is, uh, he's never getting it back. It's ruined. And his son is ugly as sin. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because he looks just like his dad. But like ginger. Yeah, weird, right? Ginger Rudy. That's what happens when you fuck your cousin. Yeah. A lot of recessive genes come out. That's right. Anyways. That's oh, the, hey, whoa. Yeah. Hey, it's halfway through the episode. What's more no than No sponsor through. today. So the sponsor is you. You need to go down to this website, which we will provide in the link below, below and buy our these exclusive dolls. <laughs> these exclusive <laughs> yeah, figurines. It says right here they're not dolls, Elliot. Got to buy so these. These are... Adult collectibles. Right. Mm-hmm. Are you adult enough to go collect these? Uh, and I think a fair price. 
But yeah, two tiny little, me and Ricky, but we're small and we sit on top of your monitor and watch you while you do what you have, whatever it is you do on your computer. The we're success, looking at you the whole time. The success of this toy will dictate our future success in the industry. If everyone says, oh, those guys worked with U2s, they didn't sell anything. Yeah. But they're never We'll be ruined. Again. We'll be the Rudy Giuliani's of YouTubers. Yeah, just so in please our, don't let that happen. In our one car that we share with our giant Jinko one pair of pants. Uh -huh. Yep. So don't let us just fail. Each doing one leg at a time. Yep, that's how we roll. God, I hate living like this. <laughs> but what are you going to do? <laughs> Nobody bought enough of our monitor, buddies. Okay, anyways, now that, that uh, our own ad is done, yeah. let's move on to the weirdest, wildest, craziest headlines from around the world this week. Starting with... Utah officials tell people to stop brining turkeys in the Great Salt Lake. You know it's better if you do it in the lake. Yeah, you know how salty that is? This had never occurred to me, and I saw the headline, and I was like, actually, that sounds fucking awesome. That's the first thing I thought. But, yeah, then you read the article, and they're like, yeah, so, I mean, yes, it would it would technically brine your turkey, but also the, like, salinity of the Great Salt Lake is so high, and it's got so many other minerals in it. Those that are good minerals. You'd probably be poisoning yourself and everyone around you. <laughs> Elliot, when I look at the label on any of this food, when I look at the label on any of this food out there, and I see hydrogenated this and that, numbers and symbols. Mm -hmm. You're yelling at me about minerals. Yeah, well, it was like arsenic is one of them. Yeah, but a little uh, bit of arsenic's uh, fine. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely, there's some minerals in the Great Salt Lake. You're actually you, building up a tolerance. That you don't want in your turkey. Yeah. You know, if you ate a turkey that was brined in the Great Salt Lake, you could go to Russia without fear of anything, really. Yeah, none of that shit's going to work on you. No. Slip you don't in. understand. I eat, I ate a turkey out of the Great they, Salt Lake. They'd have to throw you out of a window because anytime they try to slip that polonium in your tea, you're just like, mm, this is delicious. They try to throw you. My mouth is tingling. You throw you into the ocean, you float. Yeah. You float. Yep. Because yep. of the salinity. Yeah, because you're buoyant now. Yeah. So there you go. Thanks, Utah. We'll all be bringing our turkeys down to the Great Salt mm -hmm. Lake next year. They only released this because they like they found a turkey like washed up on on the on the shore. They're like poor turkey. So they don't even know if anyone was actually trying this, but they're like, all right, it's a turkey we are obligated to let you know that you shouldn't do this. Make its way home and got misidentified as a brining turkey. Yeah. yeah. Pastor fights off Thanksgiving would-be burglar with jujitsu training. I promise you that one of those faith-based movie companies already has the script in the pipeline yeah. already. And you know what? I might even watch this one. No. It's about a pastor who walks a peaceful path but he also, he got hands. This and, uh, is literally the plot to the TV show that exists within the King of the Hill universe. Yeah. <laughs> Vaya con Dios. <laughs> yeah. But he had a gun. Okay, well. This guy just knows a little jujitsu. And he seems like a, I mean, I don't know, at least in the interview, he's like, I was just trying to, was trying to stop. I wasn't yeah. trying to hurt him. I wish him the best. I wasn't like one I of those bad him. Samaritans. Yeah. I was a good one. But I am a black belt in jujitsu or whatever. And, and these uh, hands are registered as deadly weapons. I, I, I did give him a whooping. Yeah. Uh, there was also a priest or a preacher on, uh, it's like four days in a row on Jeopardy as the champion. Oh, yeah? Very unsuspecting, hmm. but very smart. Well, those priests do have a lot of time. Probably a Jesuit. Maybe. I skip all the, I just look, I go for the trivia while I eat. I skip everything. I'm not else. here for the personality. Get over, when they do the introductions, yeah. get over it. Yeah, it's not the same anymore. Trebek at least used to have fun with the introductions. Oh, great. Uh, 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 Jennings is great. Yeah, but the introductions, Trebek would like insult them and stuff. Ken, yeah, Ken yeah. Jennings is too, too he'll, timid, too meek. He'll, he'll, he'll fall into it just fine. Mm. He does, he does some gentle ribbing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This church has an AI Jesus for confessions. It gave me so much advice. You need oh, to leave that church. God. Uh, you know, say what you want about religious, religion in general. I, even if you were a believer, a follower, giving confessions to a fucking robot and who controls that data? It literally... It's probably so you, a guy in a box behind it who's just... You go into the confession booth and you have to like, permission yeah. before it starts and it's like yeah by the way don't tell jesus any personal information it's like then what's the point of this it's confession yeah but uh yeah people are like oh it's amazing and it's literally like this this would be the easiest ai chatbot to program because yeah. of everything you, you tell do it, a couple hey Mary. yeah just i don't know pray on it uh yeah. you know you got this you, you gotta like think about what the lord would want uh, yeah, you know, it's it's just the same. Is there a message in here anywhere that you were learning? You yeah, know, it, there's there's something to write back with, but uh, yeah, telling a confession to 
just putting your data, you don't you don't know where this is going. Yeah. It's probably not going to a great place. And even if it was just going to other members of the church, come on. But they got it's, it seems pretty high tech. They got it's like an actual image of Jesus' face and it speaks and the mouth moves and uh, look if you people want, are very impressed. First off, before we get started, a couple of Hail Marys, but if also if you want to opt out of our ad tracking, and uh, we're, we're also going to send you some text message prayers as yeah. well. You just, look, the next uh, couple screens, they're going to be a couple of, uh, you got to click the boxes, and then I'm going to flip this around, it's going to have a tip thing on it. So if you <laughs> felt like the Lord touched you in in a good way today. Oh, only 15% for Jesus, huh? You know, okay. I see everything. <laughs> so... Uh, Only anyways. 15 for Jesus. I'll for the re- Son of God. Jesus remembered that. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge's gravestone smashed to pieces. Good. I think, is this, this is a real person? Uh, apparently not. No, okay. this is uh, w- one of the movie versions of A Christmas Carol yeah. that was filmed in, in London in the 80s. There was, because he, there's the part where he sees the future. Yeah. And he's dead, and everyone's like, "Good, I fucking hated Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. Hawk, that dude sucks." Hawk Tua. Yeah, they're Hawk Tua and all over his <laughs> grave. <laughs> you got to give that grave a Hawk Tua. That's what they said. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, I guess they made like a real fucking grave for it. And um, the church where they filmed the graveyard scene was just like, "Yeah, we'll keep it. It's a fun little thing. Yeah, it's fine." Uh, but yeah, someone. Over in England has declared war on Christmas, apparently. And oh! Has, and has smashed Scrooge's grave Wait. to pieces. Uh, that's fine. I like I like England having a war on Christmas. Are we going to have one this year because of no, Trump uh, won? So. No, Trump stopped it. There's okay. no war on Christmas. Yeah, everyone's saying Merry Fox, Christmas now? Fox News is already doing like reporting where they're like, yeah, no, like people aren't afraid to put up their Christmas lights anymore. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who was who, who was afraid to do that? No, people were terrified. When Joe Biden was president, people were terrified of saying, Merry Christmas. They didn't yeah. want they didn't want other people to hear them say Merry Christmas. Yeah. Because because then, you know They knew you were Christian and they would they hate discriminate you for it. against you. Yeah. yeah. But now now that Trump's back, you can have you as don't much have Christmas to have as Starbucks you want. Starbucks write Merry Christmas on the cup and then yeah. read it out loud to you. Yeah. Everything's fixed now, apparently. And and when you get the, the when they give you the coffee, they have to say, Praise Jesus. Yeah. Yep. As if they don't, Cash Patel's gonna get him. That's right. Straight to the gulag. I heard you weren't praising Jesus when you were passing out those lattes. Mm-hmm. Gulag. Yep. Straight into the AI confessional. Yep. <laughs> the contraption. <laughs> uh, <laughs> South Korean man dodged draft by binge eating. I mean, it's pretty clever. It's it's a lot of work, though. It's no Ted Nugent. Yeah, Ted time. Nugent just shit his pants and didn't bathe for like several days. Yeah. And showed up and they were like, God, get the fuck out of here. The only cool thing he ever did. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I can't remember the exact exactly how Bruce Springsteen got out of it, but I think it was something similar. Mm. Not quite as gross. But yeah. Binge eating sounds cool. Cool way to I mean, dodge it, the draft. This guy gained like 50 pounds. He became obese. Just say when he's he, training for a movie role. When he he's just a guy. Yeah. <laughs> when he reported for his like registration, he was n- normal weight. Mm. And then like a few months later, when they're like reporting to duty, he's <laughs> severely overweight. And they're like glandular. Huh, sorry. What happened here? And, I mean, I feel like you could still get away with it, but somehow, somehow they figured out that, uh, that he had done it on purpose, and his friend had given him like specific tips on how to gain a bunch of weight quickly. That's the and problem. So now they're both in trouble. Too many links in the chain. Yeah. Yeah. You can't figure out how to eat a whole bunch on your own. I mean, yeah, it's pretty easy. Just, Just milkshake. Eat uh, more food. Yeah. Watch those mukbang channels. Don't and do leave. What they do. Just, just stay completely still and eat a bunch of food. Yeah. Yeah. Then they won't send you to the DMZ. Yep. Well, he showed them. I mean, it's Korea. Like, if I wanted to get fat in Korea, that would be no problem. Yep. I'd just go to KBBQ multiple times a week. Easy peasy. I like my cook my food cooked for me, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do 90% of the work. You just got to put it on the grill. It's not hey, bring bad. those scissors out here and cut me up some more meat. I'm hungry. I'm trying to dodge the trap. <laughs> here, now serve it to me. <laughs> Uh, doctors say it's fine to pee in the shower. Well, that's I mean, good news. I didn't need their permission. <laughs> no, I never <laughs> asked. I don't remember asking you a damn thing. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I've been doing it anyway. Yeah. Saves water. Mm-hmm. It's good for the planet. Yeah. You're supposed to get some all over your feet, too. Kills mm-hmm. the bacteria. That that part is not true. Uh-huh. The, the mm-hmm. army told me so. No. Yep. They also, said, and they said it works even better if you pee on your friend's feet. It works best if you, uh, if you 
if you clean your bathtub nice and squeaky clean with a good bleach wash, and, and then you pee in the in the tub while that bleach is still <laughs> nice and uh, fresh. No, don't do that. That's mustard gas. Mustard. <laughs> but yeah, pee in the shower. Do it. It's fine. Yeah, it's actually really cool. It feels really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's stopping you. You know what? Don't just, waste a flush. Just don't do what redditors do. The, the waffle, waffle stomp. stomp. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, they got they're 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 doing a little too much. They got the waffle stomp, the poop knife. There's too much going on. Yeah, yeah don't do any of that. What you do is you take the the grid, the the filter off of the ground, and then you just go straight into the hole. <laughs> yeah, it's a game. See yeah. if you can get it to go all the way down. Just make it disappear. <laughs> yeah. That's somebody else's problem. <laughs> uh, Japan launches drinkable mayo for fans that just can't get enough. <laughs> Ricky, you love mayo, so you'd probably love this mayo. drink. Mm, glug, oh. glug, glug with the mayonnaise. They do love mayo over there. <laughs> this is so gross. Thing is, Japan, it's the, we introduced mayonnaise to them, and they perfected it. That Kewpie mayonnaise that has, it's just packed, loaded with MSG. Ever since I tried that, I, I, I will never eat American mayonnaise ever again. I want that monosodium sodium glutamate. Yeah. I want that umami flavor. Yeah. But I still wouldn't drink it. And it sounds like the reviews of the drinkable mayo is like, some real hardcore mayo fans were just like, I was really excited about this, but it's not good. It just tastes like watered down mayo. I was hoping for something. I mean, I don't know what I expect, <laughs> but, I, but I was hoping for something different. You know what? Whatever makes people happy, I guess. Just keep it away from me. Next time you're in Japan, you got to pick one up. Have you been to the Japanese milk place here they have yet? They fly in the milk from Japan. They make what? ice cream with it. What? Yeah. What's so good about that milk? Uh, I, ha I, I don't think that it's raw milk. I haven't looked into it yet, but well, it is. It's, couldn't do that. That would be illegal. It's from uh, Japanese cows, so it's fancier, obviously. Oh, yeah. okay. It's, uh, it's like in Echo Park. Wagyu milk? La di da. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza Hut tomato wine. Does it actually taste like Pizza Hut? We found out. Well, not we, but the guys who wrote this. They did. And uh, yeah, they said it tastes kind of like pizza. Yeah. I don't know. They said it sounds like it tastes like a like a Bloody Mary. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it, I guess it does pair well with the pizza because, you know, a lot of, the lot of crossover. Thanksgiving I went to was Italian themed. Oh. Which I found to be offensive. As, <laughs> as, as a full blooded Italian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, what the heck, man? Where's the turkey? <laughs> One of the sides, though, was a. Uh, it was pizza themed scalped potatoes. I, I, I'm having There's like pepperonis trouble. And, and some sauce and yeah, that could uh, be good. cheese. Yeah. And, okay, yeah, it was yeah. fine. Yeah. I, no, I actually like really liked it, but it was yeah. it was a little odd with everything else. But uh, I, I mean, that's it was great. Uh, like everything tastes better with like. Cheese and Cured sauce. meats and cheese on yeah. it. Like, yeah. That's why. Oh, the other thing that was great was uh, my buddy made, he, he did a whole bunch of like uh, chicken legs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not turkey, too dry. Uh, and he forgot, he made half of them spicy and half of them not. Forgot. So that, that was a fun game, too. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun, fun Thanksgiving. I hope everyone else had a fun Thanksgiving, too. I watched the, they, they popped that bluey balloon, but they got it repaired just in time. Oh, bluey popped? Uh, the whole parade looked fucking miserable. Yeah, it I was, don't know why people do it. It was freezing cold, but not cold enough to actually freeze and turn into snow. Mm -hmm. So it was just cold rain in New York. Yeah. Yeah. At least with the, like, the Pasadena Rose Parade, it's not freezing cold. Although, those people camp out overnight, and it does get very cold. Yeah. So, I don't get it. I can't imagine wanting to see something that much. Yeah, it's a, you know, oh, it's cool. a parade. Oh, cool. Balloons. Oh, cool. I went to that doohickey. A car covered in flowers. I went to that doohickey parade like two weeks ago, but that was nice. It was just like. Yeah, that's just. It was in the middle of the day. Doohickeys. No one was really fighting for spots. Yeah. Just some doohickeys. Yeah. Luxury cruise line passengers set for Antarctica have gone on a hunger strike over engine failure. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I just got served an ad for this not too long ago. To go on a cruise to Antarctica? There, it was like a thing that was, like, they're cruising to Antarctica now. Yeah. It, it can happen. Well, these people are very upset. It's it's very funny because it's like literally a mechanical issue with the boat. Like, they have to, they can't fix it. Yeah. So, like, we're, people are going on, on hunger strike. No, take us to Antarctica. It's like, literally not possible. Look, <laughs> I agree. No, I'm, I swear to God, I'm going to starve myself to death if you don't take us to Antarctica. We can't. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. More food for us. It's but, very. I mean, I guess it would be disappointing, but it's like there's nothing that can be done. Yeah, they're not just choosing not to take you there. 
they can't take you there. The boat, you specifically, the boat don't work. Mm -hmm. Anyway, final headline: Pete Hegseth's mother accused her son of mistreating women for years. Even his mother hates him. Yep. Just like Jesse Waters' mother. They uncovered. I don't know how it came to light, but this email that she sent him after, like, it was really. Like after his second Probably divorce, discovery. He's at he's on like his third divorce by now. But this was after his second divorce, and his mom's just like, "You're a real piece of shit. <laughs> You've been mistreating women all your life. You're philandering. You're running around. You're big mouthy. Well, look who's not laughing now. He's gonna be uh -huh. in charge of a part of the country. And yeah, every like everything she said. I'm like, yeah, this this all lines up with everything we know about this yeah. guy. But then when she was reached for comment, she's like, actually, I didn't mean it. Uh, he's actually a no, really good boy. No, don't reach for comment on Thanksgiving. You gotta reach for comment like... Uh, yeah! Uh, no, Pete... Pete's a really good boy. Yeah. It was... We did a little water under the bridge Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let Pete back in the house, and then all of a sudden I started getting phone calls right in front of him. Hmm. Uh, anyways, fuck that guy. And buy our monitor, buddies. That's it for today's episode. That. Buy a friend. Uh, you Two can click them. the link and buy those in the description below. We really appreciate it. If you like the video, click the like button. It really helps us out. Uh, and I hope you got, Old news over there. Yeah, Look old news old be popping news. up. Uh, and we hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Or if you don't live in this country, we hope you had a great meal. Yeah, and I hope you're ready for war. The war on Christmas. The war on... Uh, no, I'm going to be eating uh, enough to where they don't draft me in that war. Yeah. Too fat for the war on Christmas. Yeah. Oh, now you have to deliver presents. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the punishment. You Anyways, drafted as Santa. Old videos. Make sure you like the video. Leave a comment. Engage in it in some way. And we'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.